Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Blue Archive video. Let's talk about this character right here, Ui. Alright, so a lot of players have asked me, Hey Guitar Rock, Ui is coming very very soon. She's coming in approximately 3 to 4 days at the time of me making this video. And people are very conflicted about whether or not you should be pulling for Ui. Now this is something that I hope you know, in this particular video, I can give you guys a better perspective of how useful she is, when you can use her, and whether or not pulling for her is a good idea for you, alright, in your account. So I do think that she is going to be, for now, one of the better striker supports out there. Alright, what do I mean by striker support? If you look at the role of the students, there's a role of striker students and there's a role of special students. Now when you enter into a battle, you can use four striker students and two special students. Now striker slot is going to be very focused on characters to be in front, right? So therefore, building characters in striker slots, especially for someone like Ui, is going to be very, very strict. I would say that's the word, right? Because you need her to have some of her good gears because she's always going to be in front. There's a lot of instances where I've tried to use her, uh, you know, a little bit under level, under geared, and she just get destroyed in the AoE uh, attacks of certain enemies. So therefore, that's something that you have to be very, very careful with. Whereas with someone like Akko and Himari, they don't really appear in the four students that, you know, stack in front. So they are completely safe if you don't have enough uh, investment in your, in your gears, right? So that's something that you want to take into consideration as well. Ui is going to be relatively easy to build. If you look at this, you know, you only need to focus on her uh, EX skill and basic skill. Alright, this one is not going to be that important because it increases her own crit rate. She's a support unit, so she doesn't need that. Same applies for this one, increase her own attack speed, but she most of the time won't really need that because she doesn't do much damage. So with that being said, let's focus a little bit on Ui, and then first talk about the banners of all the characters coming right after this. So right now, in the current roster of banners, we still have the Hot Spring Shigure alongside with Hot Spring Cherino alongside with Hot Spring uh, Chinatsu Onsen Chinatsu Onsen Nadoka. So all of these four banners as you can see is going to go away on 23rd of April. Now what are these going to get replaced with? So we're going to have the four characters. First up we have the regular Shigure. It's going to come back in the rerun. And then we have the Megu. Alright so very very interesting character. I still don't have her yet. I wish I got her. And then we also have Hinata alongside with I do think that out of these four, the most important one is going to be Ui. Now Ui is probably like I said, uh, very very important for especially new players. If you're trying to tackle a lot of the rotations by doing raids and doing story, she helps you out a lot. Now if you want to use any characters with high cost, using Ui is just going to make it way more efficient for you. Now let me show you guys a little bit of example, right? Let's talk about her skills in general. Her EX skill is going to be a little bit restrictive. You need to try to max it out, all right? So because this is where the cost reduction is going to make more sense, when you use Ui, her job is to half the EX skill cost of one ally DPS characters preferably by 50%. So if the character is 6 cost, they become 3 cost for 2 rounds, all right? So if the character is 5 cost, they become 2.5 cost, but it's always it's always rounded down to the nearest whole number. So 2.5 actually become 3 cost, all right? So it's still something you have to keep in mind. Uh, and also she gives a little bit of attack boost. Now at skill cost level, EX skill 1 and 2 is 5 cost, uh, EX 3 and 4 is 4 cost, and when it goes all the way down to EX skill at 5, is going to be a 3 cost. Now the truth is, I do think that she's going to be pretty flexible in terms of she can be used almost everywhere. Alright, so she, if you want to use her in story, you can. You want to use her in raids, you can as well. Now when should you use her though? That's going to be the question. When will Ui actually be good for your team overall? Like, is there like a specific set of rules that I try to follow? Now, let me show you guys a little bit. Uh, I'm going to try to fight this. All right, and then show you guys a little bit more about what she's capable of and what's the rule mindset ideally. So I have Ui right here, all right, alongside with Kasumi, and then we have Chise. All right, we're gonna use all of these characters right here. So remember, Ui can only apply her EX skill to one of these four characters. She cannot apply her EX skill to like the special students. So keep that in mind, right? That's something that is very, very important. All right, so she's going to be a very, very good support striker that only buffs you know, strikers in general. So this is a good example. We have Kasumi right here. All right, so if I use Ui on her, now you can see from four costs, she's gonna become two costs. All right, very, very efficient. 
in this particular case. Now keep in mind, if a character is 5 cost, they become 3 cost. They don't become 2.5, alright? There's no decimal points. Alright, let's show you guys with Hina because she's 7 cost and with Bani Asuna because she's 5 cost. So that's going to be easier to portray right here. Alright, so you can see Bani Asuna is 5 cost. And if I use this on her, she will become a 2.5, but because it's always going to be, uh, there's no decimal points, uh, it will be 3 cost. Right there, as you can see. Alright, same goes with Hina. So Hina is supposed to be 3.5, but it will become 4. So right there you can see. Alright, Hina is not that good here because, you know, resist and stuff. Now with that out of the way, when should you use Ui? Like when is the best time to use Ui or when can you benefit from her cost reduction in terms of trying to be more efficient in a total rotation, right? So let's talk about 6 costs, alright? So for example, Mika. So if you use Mika in a rotation with Ui, that's going to make her cost become 3. Now this is throughout in 2 rotations. When you use Ui skill, her EX skill is going to be 3 cost and then Mika is going to become 3 cost and 3 cost. So if you use Mika on her own without Ui, it's going to be 6 plus 6. So you can see from 12, it become 9. Alright, so definitely you are saving costs when you use Ui with a character with 6 costs for sure. But what if a character is 5 costs? For example, Bani Asuna that we just tested earlier. Alright, so this is going to be... Or even a Nonomi. Alright, so she's a 5 cost. So it's going to become 5 plus 5. And that's going to become a 10 cost. Alright, by default she's 10 cost. Now if you use Ui to make her reduce costs, it's going to become 3, 3, and Ui herself is 3. Alright, remember, it's, there's no 2.5 there. It's going to become 3 costs for the Nomi. So 10 costs versus 9 costs. You're still being more efficient when you use Ui, surprisingly. Even though it's 1 cost difference, but when you're trying to play in a raid, you can actually feel the difference, right? When you're cycling through, you can actually feel your cost is going to regen faster. And because everything is time-based, the timer is always there on the top, right? That's going to determine your rankings. The faster you can beat the boss, you know, by using Ui, if you can be more efficient with that one cost, you're ideally just going to do more damage. And also, don't forget that Ui gives attack percent buff as well. So what about a 4 cost character? Alright, so this is where it gets tricky. So for 4 cost character, let's say a character like Chise. So it's going to become a 4 plus 4, alright, over the course of 2 rotations. Now instead of when Ui uses her skill, her EX skill is going to become 2 because it halves it. And then Ui herself costs 3 costs. So you can see 8 costs versus... 4 plus 3, 7. So you're still being more efficient, surprisingly, if you use Ui, alright? To rotate a 4 cost DPS character. Now, when it starts getting less efficient, is when you're using 3 cost characters, alright? So what am I talking about? Uh, in this case, we're talking about the likes of, uh, let's say, Yori, or even uh, Haruna. When you max out Haruna EX skill at level 5, these are all 3 cost DPS characters, right? So when you use 3 cost DPS characters, uh, by default, 2 rotation is 3 cost, 3 cost, 6 cost, and then when you have it, it becomes 2. So this is, this is where when you use Ui, it actually makes things worse, alright? Because 6 cost, but when you use this, it's 7 cost when you use Ui. So for 3 cost EX skill characters, alright? The example that I used was Yori, alright? So in this case, uh, Yori, you can see, hers is 3 cost, and also uh, Haruna. Haruna is 3 cost when you EX 5 her it becomes less efficient when you use Ui. So in that case, don't use Ui when you're using a 3 cost characters. However, if you look at the pattern of all the DPS characters that they have released thus far, it's always going to be... Uh, it's very rare to see a 3 EX cost character. In fact, let's look at the roadmap. Uh, if you look at the next few characters, let's look at Shigure and Megu. These are the characters coming alongside with Ui and also Hinata, right? So, Shigure is a, an attacker, and she's going to be a 5 cost. So how about Megu? Megu is also an attacker, explosive striker. She is also a 5 cost. Alright, how about, um, in this case, uh, Hinata. Hinata is also a 5 cost. Oh, Hinata is 6 cost. I didn't even know that. But again, 5 cost, 6 cost, doesn't matter, it's still better to use Ui. Alright, you save a little bit of cost when you rotate 2 rounds. So all in all, I do think that the value in Ui is actually there. Now, the problem is going to be right after them. Right after Ui, we have the so-called collab characters. Now, unfortunately, I can't confirm this with you guys because if you look at the roadmap, there's no roadmap. This is the last roadmap that Nexon released. Alright, this was all the way back in January to February this year. 
all right we have like swimsuit shiroko and then we have the swimsuit hanako later on and then of course we have the mimori swimsuit on the 1st of february all right ever since there has not been any more roadmap we did get this kivoto's hello festival though all right this was a release but there wasn't any roadmap uh, in this particular event as well so that was the one with tracks with hasumi which i hope all of you guys managed to obtain her for free she's a very very strong dps character as you can see it's hard to say for sure but if we are following the jp server the collab characters are coming next now this is something that you have to decide yourself if you care about meta ui is going to be better but if you care about you know, like having the collectibles, having characters that can never return ever again, then I do think that the value definitely lies in the collect characters. So it depends on why you're playing the game. Are you playing the game uh, just to collect characters? If that's the case, then, you know, saving for the collab makes a lot of sense. If you're playing the game to mostly try to get strong characters so that you can do end game contents, all right? The raids, you want to be able to get decent score in drills. You want to be able to progress in story. So if those are what is important for you, then obviously, right, going for Ui is going to make more sense. Now, there are some players that ask me, what about Himari later on? So that's a good question, right? So Himari is going to come later on as well. So you can see right here. All right, so alongside with Amy's swimsuit. However, this is following the JP schedule. Again, no idea if they're going to shift it around for global server. What if they, you know, change the order and push Himari away? Or maybe just shuffle her into, you know, if into the front? They might do that, all right, considering that it has changed several times before. So that's something that you have to consider as well. Now, within between Ui and Himari, personally, I'm going to pick Himari because I do think that Himari is going to be uh, much easier for a lot of players to basically use her being a special slot and all and also she has cost regen built in onto her i mean the sub skill right cost recovery so there's that so of course there's always going to be uh, priorities but i do think that it's hard for me to say for certain that we're going to follow the order in this case uh there's a chance that once you miss out ui you might not get her for a while so that's something that you guys have to consider for for a little bit especially with this cost reduction characters the next character that supposedly we're gonna get that can do something similar is going to be new year uh fuuka but that's going to be slightly later uh because jp just got her like kind of recently ish and then you can see new year fuuka rerun is going to happen like way after the you know the six percent banner and all so that's going to be something that you have to decide it's going to be a while more and then ui rerun was there but then we got this one was moved in global for us now, if you can afford it, Ui is going to be a very, very good character. As far as I know, the collect characters, uh, if you don't care about the meta, they are not like super crazy strong or anything. All right, they are good for collection. There are some players that say, I would rather try to spook her later on. I'll be honest with you, uh, gambling to spook her is going to be really, really difficult. Now, as someone that's been playing Blue Archive since day one, and I purposely didn't pick this particular character, look at this, all right? Guess what character I still don't have until today. One of the first characters that appear in Blue Archive back then when it first came out in 2021. That's right, you've probably seen my list before. Me, Dory. All right, until today. I've been playing the game for almost three years now, all right? I still haven't gotten her. So it's not easy to spook a character, believe it or not. Uh, this is like speaking from experience, right? And let me show you guys in the... Uh, global banner list she's all the way one of the first character that was featured in the earliest banners all right you, when the f game first came out so it was hoshino shiroko and then it was mashiro aru and then it was this character and then midori momoi was here so they were introduced back then in 14th of december 2021 so yeah <laughs> something to consider all right there, there's a chance that if you don't pull for ui you might not get her in a long time spooking is not something that it's as easy as you think, considering that there's so many characters in Blue Archive right now, right? Uh, there's quite a number of characters, actually. So to get that particular one character is going to be kind of hard. So yeah, with that being said, that's going to be it for this video. Subscribe if you guys are ready. Give this video a like. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Have a nice day. Goodbye.